Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us again today. A big shout out to Furby House Books in Port Hope. Because of the Coburg Public Library's partnership with Furby House, we are able to bring authors to the screen and into your home. So we are very pleased to be doing that once again. And thank you for joining us. Um, for a second time this year, we are pleased to welcome Rachel McMillan. Rachel joined Hi. us earlier in the summer to discuss her novel, The Mozart Code, a book brimming with intrigue, mystery, and romance. Today, we are in the holiday spirit, and Rachel is back to talk about her delightful book, A Very Merry Holiday Movie Guide. In this book, the author invites you to skip the office Christmas party, put on your coziest PJs, and crash on the couch with a cup of hot chocolate in one hand and your remote in the other to watch the movies that have become the hallmark of the holiday season. Ashley Pimenter is our host extraordinaire once again, and she has joined us for this very festive broadcast. When she's not curled up with a good book, Ashley creates and supports programming to support the kids who are part of the Girl Guides of Canada. She's also the co-chair of the Red Maple Awards Steering Committee and writes reviews for the Canadian Children's Book News. Welcome, Rachel and Ashley. Hello. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. So nice to be hanging out with you again. I know. So fun. <laughs> um, as you can see, we have donned our festive apparel because we're yes. talking about this fabulous little book. A very, a very merry holiday guide. I always get the very and the merry in the back. <laughs> um, an, an audience. This is one of the first books that we reviewed where the viewing experience of the actual book is as important as the words inside. So I'm going to actually like, take you inside the book today. So Rachel, this book you had mentioned, uh, you and I were chatting a little bit earlier. Yeah. You had talked about how this book came out in 2020. Um, what was it like trying to write a book and pandemic hit and uh, I don't know. <laughs> what, what well was it was like written you? before I did a bit of editing during the pandemic but it was really difficult um to get the word out about books and this came out um just as the London restoration came out so I, I basically did live on zoom I was doing so many virtual events but there was just a different approach to Christmas that year and so it I mean I hope that the people who found it and loved it love that that was the one staying power in this closed down world is Hallmark Channel still cranked out about 42 movies and you would see behind the scenes that they would put plexiglass between the couples so they could mimic kissing on screen and then they would like edit that out during the filming process but it's really interesting that the power of tv christmas movies cannot be stopped by a pandemic and that just that fascinated me <laughs> so it, it was a weird experience as it was for all authors trying to launch something during the pandemic but it's kind of a timeless book so uh i hope people like it <laughs> oh i um I loved it. Now, I'm not a huge holiday Christmas movie person, and it turns out that now I'm going to be, because I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> so readers, I'm going to take you inside. You are not going to be able to read this on my screen. Don't worry, no judgment. But what I wanted to show you is like the vast array of people that you are approaching with this book. You have Baker's Christmas, Shopper's Christmas, my personal favorite, Book Lover's Christmas, mm -hmm. Fashion Lover's Christmas, The Family Christmas. You have 16 different options for people to explore things based on their passions and interests. And I just love that so much. So readers, I'm going to take you in the book because this is just such a pleasure. And like, I just want to call attention. You were talking, you and I'm going to move this so that it doesn't affect the, the viewing for everybody um, about the illustrator that you worked with. And Laura, just, like, she is amazing. In fact, everyone should look Laura Bean, B-E-A-N up on Instagram. Her illustrations are amazing. This is the second project we worked on. and. It was just awesome because I gave my editor the idea for this, you know, red and white candy cane type, type color palette and some ideas of what would show up um, so that it kind of marries what I think marries kind of the vintage kind of Dickensian type Christmas with the carolers and the garlands, but also something more modern to reflect that it is about made for TV Christmas movies. So, <laughs> of which uh, I love it. In. <laughs> uh, there's so many, but one of the th things that um, I'm going to take the, our readers into this 
is that in each one of these, you approach it similarly. They're not exactly the same. So readers, don't be, don't be fooled. They don't fall out entirely. So make sure to like check out each one. Cause I made that trick. Like the first story I was like, oh, these are very similar. And then I heard, I was like, oh, that's this. Oh, I didn't think of it that way. So I just want to warn the readers going in. It's not like a, as pattern-ish as you would. And one of like the nice things that you include, let's see if I can get my camera to look at the text, is like how to create Christmas atmosphere, the perfect bookish atmosphere. Each chapter has this customized viewing list. And again, are these three charming friends who show up throughout that I'm just like, yes, I would like to watch Christmas movies with you three. You have come up with some like some reading lists and in this one, it's reading lists. In other ones, it's recipes. And one of the things I really love that you bring into a lot of the chapters is this like start a new tradition. And one of the things that the pandemic really taught us is that we can start new traditions and that just mm. because something didn't look the way it was before doesn't mean it can't be this way. Um, and so I just, and one of the nice things, uh, the other thing I really love, I love a short chapter in every. <laughs> yes. You feel so like you it, accomplish a lot. <laughs> and so the other thing is that you don't inundate your readers with every possible thing they could do. It's not like here's 15 patterns for the bunting you need to make that has all the little books lined up on it. It's nothing like that. It's not like Pinterest when you're like, oh, I can't do any of these things. Everything is so manageable within about 10 pages. And so yeah. you can just like pick it up and get some ideas and go. And I just like, what a, what a little delight this book is in general. Um, so I want to actually like talk a little bit about holidays now. And because you are the creator of this fabulous <laughs> tome of like everything, like as a person whose favorite Christmas movie is Die Hard, I can't wait to like die. In <laughs> That's awesome. And it is a Christmas movie. I'm on team. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Yeah. So. <laughs> Feel free to put in the comments if you disagree. Uh, <laughs> we can still be friends. We can all. It's totally fine. <laughs> so it's just, it has this beautiful flow. You've really put a lot of care and thought about it. And I'm curious for you, what makes holiday movies so special? Like, why are they at the heart of this wonderful little It's resource? so funny. And one thing that readers should know is that it is not, you know, it, I have different lists of favorite holiday movies. Like I've got my It's a Wonderful Life I love. I love the Netflix movie Klaus a lot. I love The Muppets Christmas Carol. But this is specifically made for TV movies a la Netflix Hallmark Lifetime. And I've always been someone who's loved Christmas. I love Christmas music. I love everything Christmas. I love the traditions. It's my favorite time of year um, to go home to Aurelia where I'm from and everything's decorated. I just, I love Christmas. Um, but I was about 10 years ago, I was still working in a corporate publishing job and I ended up having to be on medical leave for a while. And the W Network would play these constant TV Christmas movies from November through January. And I found that they were just so comforting. They're the perfect thing to have in the background while you're baking or ironing or folding laundry, because anytime you look over, you see Christmas festive color palettes. The women are always in cranberry or green. The guys are always in some kind of plaid. I just find them really comforting. And I think I love them because they, the world can be really scary, <laughs> especially right now, right? It's, there's so much going on. You know what you're getting in a Hallmark Christmas movie. You know that everything is going to be okay. You know that you can leave for 10 minutes and come back and you're going to be able to pick up the story. So I think I just love the fact that they celebrate romance and simpler things that at the end it's all about family and friends and not what you have and not what you make but who you are inside and it's often about people going back to their roots or people deciding they didn't want this big flashy job they'd rather you know marry the guy who has a Christmas tree farm and I just think that's awesome um and one of the things that people often tell me is that well they're not very feminist, but actually they are because the women always choose what they want out of their lives. There's a lot of agency to them. So, cause sometimes I get the comment, like, how can you like these? They're not feminist. Well, if a woman has a choice to go and marry a Christmas tree farmer because she's overworked at the New York office, then kudos to her. So I just, I love them. They're so fun. <laughs> you know, that is such a, like such a grounding reason to think about it. Like, especially around the holidays for anybody who has 
family members and is trying to like balance all of it. We spend so much time at Christmas problem solving and yeah. shopping and rushing. And so sometimes you need that little bit of self-soothing and to be like, Hey, you know what? I know how this is going to end and it's going to end well, because we can't predict anything going well in our real lives. But in a Hallmark movie, I can be like, she's going to end up with that they're person pretty and they're going to be happy. <laughs> and that's like, sometimes you just need that in life to be like, okay, they're going to be happy and I'm going to be happy. And what a lovely way of putting that as well. And you're a reader. I mean, books right now are supposed to have hooks that are twisting and winding and the story is supposed to shock you in 18 different ways. There's a beginning, a middle and the end. And I love that. And I think we've lost a lot of that. And I think it's really wonderful that we can ground it in this tradition. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> um, what's like, so throughout the novel, no, no, it's not a novel. Throughout this wonderful, I'm going to just call it like your go-to guide for when you need a little bit of <laughs> yeah. like, someone else has put the thought in for me. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, what's your like one go-to? Like when you're like, oh, I just need, I need this moment. Do you have a go-to movie that you're like, I'm going to put this on every time? As I mentioned, Die Hard is mine. <laughs> yeah. And C Christmas movie, very merry mix up. And actually I love that movie so much that I worked it into the title um, to the point where I got some really terrible health news about a family member. This is another thing I mentioned in the introduction, I think. It's been a while since I've read this book, but the, the moment I got this bad anxiety driving news, I immediately turned that film on because it's like medicine and it's such a inexpensive way to experience Christmas. And I really try to not only bolster that you can find happiness and joy in little ways, I give you ideas for it. And it really kind of matched with the pandemic when we were all at home and couldn't do stuff because there's a lot of homebound things. But also, it's a different Christmas for many people this year because there's a lot of a global economic type crisis. You do not have to, and you were saying this just a while ago, you do not have to go all out for Christmas. It, the best things about these films are that they keep it baseline. They, it's always going to be about ice skating, Christmas trees, stuff that isn't going to be flashy and expensive. And I just love that about them. All right. And so much of this book um, for, for all your readers is that you create these moments of like, you know what you could do? You could sing a Christmas carol and you could do it this yeah. way. You want to make it inclusive? Sing it about snow instead. And I was like, like, look how simple this is. This cost me nothing to do these things. And you really focus on connection between people in your books and creating these moments of connection through film and through these little bits of festive calmness that you're bringing in. And like, I have to admit, like, I'm like, how am I going to use this guide? to plan all my winter breaks so be nice <laughs> and chill and can be all relaxed. And so readers, I also recommend use this, bring it chill. Like, let's be like, Hey, we're going to live a Hallmark movie this time. None of us, yeah. owns a Christmas uniform, thankfully, because that cannot be a lack of stress at that time of year, but we'll and just marry a Christmas tree farmer. One thing that Hallmark has, even since this, I wrote this book a few years ago has really expounded on is the inclusivity of more than just the Christmas holidays. So I confess that this book is very Christmas centric, um, partly because that's my background and experience, but I do encourage people who uh, celebrate maybe nothing at all or celebrate Festivus or celebrate Hanukkah or celebrate Kwanzaa to recognize that Hallmark is getting a lot better at being inclusive in the terms of, I, I think we still have a long way to go, but um, I think that even since this book came out, they've been doing a very good job, but this one is kind of Christmas centric, but you can make it a holiday centric, just pick and choose <laughs> which ones align with how you experience this season. Yeah. And actually like so many of the, of the ideas in here, you could expand to other things. Like if you have a yeah. book club and you're like, you know, it'd be fun in February when everything's awful. Let's make February and Christmas, like February, Christmas time. Love and we're going to have a little party together. And we're going to do some of the fun things in this book. And it's just, again, I keep going to the book lovers one because it's my favorite, but if you're a baker, there's like fun things you can do in there as well. If you are a fashionista, which is not my jam, but is other, <laughs> definitely your jam, Rachel. Um, <laughs> there's something there for you. And one of the things I was actually thinking, like, as I opened it up is that I never would have thought about the pure diversity of interests that you've, you've approached in this book. How did you like, what is the writing process when you're like, how do I stretch this? Like, how well, it's a, 
it's a little different with the nonfiction for any aspiring writers, uh, because you sell based on a proposal and a table of contents. So you don't need to finish the entire book, which you often do when you're writing novels, and that's a whole different ballgame. Um, you know, writing this at the same time I was writing Mozart Code was an absolute joy. Like, it was so nice to get out of post-war Prague and into this. But I just sat down one afternoon and I was like, okay, I've got 18 million Christmas movies at my disposal. Um, and I've got so many different ideas for how I could, once I had that organization, the segments, what kind of Christmas lover would like these activities, then I just did a ton of brainstorming. And I called a lot from my childhood where Christmas was always a big deal. Um, but I also kind of expanded on things that I have always wanted Christmas to be. They they don't always turn out that way. You know, I'm, I'm single. I don't have my own family. But I always loved the idea of like, what would I do if I had Christmas in a certain way? And how I can I tailor that to my life experience? So it was a lot of me and a notebook having way too much fun. Um, <laughs> the W Network in Canada is where all the Hallmark Movies are shown 24-7. They're also on Stack TV on Prime Video. And I just, I always had them going. And I just would write down things as they came to me. And then I streamlined them into the book. So it was fun. We need more fun books in this world. Yeah. Not that the Mozart Code is not fun. Readers, the Mozart it's Heart is fun. in a different fun. way. <laughs> Very different. Very different. You are not going to find any post war no. <laughs> But you will find music. Uh, because I'm super into music. And that... You know, there's a lot of these movies that incorporate music. So that that was fun to explore. Oh, well, thank you so much for sharing that your love with us and reminding You're us welcome. that sometimes nonfiction can be fun. And one thing I also want to do a little plug is that Cobra Public Library brings together movies and books and has a series of Christmas movies that you can rent. Now, not necessarily Hallmark ones that you're going to find in here but has a collection so that you can fill both your, your niches. You can fill your holiday planning and you can fill your little bit of comfort when it gets overwhelming. So kudos to the co public library as well. Thank you for that plug, Ashley. <laughs> we appreciate it. We do have lots of holiday movies. Uh, Rachel and Ashley, thank you so much for sparking our holiday spirit. And um, to our audience, copies of A Very Merry Holiday Movie Guide can be picked up at Furby House Books in Port Hope. The book is also available for loan at the Coburg Public oh, Library. Oh, yay! Thanks, so, Coburg Public Library! <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. No reason to um, go without movie recommendations this holiday. So please go out, buy, or borrow a, a very merry holiday movie guide and um, enjoy the season. Take care, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me again. Thank you. Thank you.